Okay, the rollout of the Biden-Harris Democratic ticket yesterday was greeted with the expected fanfare. What was most curious is that across the media landscape, it was Kamala Harris, not the man purportedly atop the ticket, that got all the accolades. Joe Biden has just put Kamala Harris uh, right to the front of the line in terms of the leadership of the Democratic Party. She's going to be catapulted uh, into this position of being the front runner for the 2024 Democratic nomination. I was hoping for more of like a Harris Biden ticket. And at this rate, one day they might be calling Barack Obama the previous Kamala Harris. Team Harris is a considerable network. It seems so Obama esque. <laughs> now, this follows, as I mentioned last night, CNN's Chris Saliza, who wrote that Kamala Harris will be ready to step in if and when Biden decides to step aside. What most are failing to realize is that Joe Biden may have already stepped aside. This is a new campaign video of Biden offering Harris the running mate job. Not only does he say virtually nothing, but basic technology seems to be a challenge. Jilly, can you hear? Hi, Jim. Hang on, I'm gonna put you on speaker. Jilly, are you yeah. there? Hi. Can, can you hear? Hi. I'm just, I'm thrilled. Yes, let me get a hug, hey, Dougie. Jill, Jill ready to go to work. Look, guys. Um, first of all, both of you. This is a team. This is a team effort. You know, this is a team play, and uh, I think we agree. We're, it is really about restoring the soul of this country. What campaign cuts away as the candidate begins to speak? And did you notice Harris's husband? She's, he says, we're ready to put it all on the line for you, Jill. Biden's like a rest home resident listening to his favorite radio show. Can you imagine the material they edited out? What this little vignette demonstrates is that Joe Biden, or the Joe Biden the public thought they knew, is no longer there. He's no longer able to navigate a simple conversation, even with his own team. Forget reporters. And his party, particularly the energized left, knows Joe Biden is not in charge. This is Democratic Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal. As soon as we get him in the White House, and even before, um, with these task forces that we had, we were able to significantly push Joe Biden to do things that he hadn't signed on to before. So he is movable. He is listening. He may be listening, but these extremists are using Biden in a cruel political masquerade, turning the former VP into a silent mask for their radical policies. The Biden campaign is running on three basic issues, higher taxes, investments, they call them, more COVID lockdowns and mandates, and racial division. Now, the handlers are smartly trying to confuse the public by evoking the Biden of old. For instance, they dropped this ad where he reminisces about meeting nuns outside the Vatican. First people I saw were a group of nuns who, to me, epitomize everything Pope Francis talked about. I thought it was a good omen. We are a brother's keeper. Unless you happen to be an unborn child, Biden, the mask goer, supports abortion on demand and full funding of Planned Parenthood. And at the same time, Biden is professing his undying love for nuns. He's threatening to take the little sisters of the poor to court to force them to comply with the Obamacare mandate, which he was responsible for, for requiring the nuns to offer contraceptives and abortifacients to their employees. Now, the old pro-life moderate Joe Biden is just no longer there, despite the gauzy videos trying to convince you otherwise. Meanwhile, his replacement, I mean his running mate, Kamala Harris, is also something of a transformer. She all but charged Biden with sexual abuse and racism just last year. But now she's his main surrogate on race, billed as an icon that will draw African-Americans to vote for the Democratic ticket. This despite the fact that even CNN sparred over her heritage. She is a black woman. She's a mixed race woman. She is also South Asian. To I know what they're saying. want a distinction to say, is she African-American or is she black or is she whatever? That what's, there is nothing wrong with that. There is a difference between being African-American and being black. But she is Jamaica is not America. But she is a black woman. She Jamaica was born here. Jamaica did not here come in out of Jim Crow. Okay, well, let's, I'm let's just go saying. Into Mm, somebody needs to call Henry Louis Gates. But the fact is, Harris is constantly rewriting her story to suit the moment. Remember her interview with Charlemagne the God? They say you oppose legalizing weed. 
That's not true. I know. <laughs> and, and, and look, I joke about it, half joking. I have my family's from Jamaica. Are you kidding me? <laughs> have you ever smoked? I have. Okay. Like and I, and I inhaled. I just broke loose. <laughs> And she inhaled Harris's efforts to appear cool were mostly ignored by those she was trying to reach. But her father, a Stanford economics professor, issued a statement claiming that Kamala's ancestors must be turning in their grave right now to see their family's name, reputation, and proud Jamaican identity being connected in any way, jokingly or not, with a fraudulent stereotype of a pot-smoking joy seeker and in the pursuit of identity politics. Speaking for myself and my immediate Jamaican family, we wish to categorically disassociate ourselves from this travesty. Now, imagine the coverage, say, Mary Trump might have gotten had she issued such a statement. But when Harris stretches the truth and her own father calls her out, charges her with identity politics, no questions are asked. As the Democratic ticket remakes and recasts itself, the president today announced an unexpected and unprecedented diplomatic coup. For the first time in a quarter of a century, the U.S. led a peace negotiation in the Middle East. The United Arab Emirates are establishing diplomatic ties with the state of Israel, halting the annexation of Palestinian territories in the West Bank. It was Trump's withdrawal from the Iranian nuclear deal and his push for American energy independence that, that facilitated this breakthrough. But if you look what's happened since I broke up that ridiculous Iran nuclear deal. Money is in going to some horrible, horrible groups. And you haven't seen the kind of terrorism that you saw before. They're dying to make a deal, but they'd much rather negotiate with sleepy Joe Biden than with us. This is a moment for American voters to take stock of reality. As you'll see in the hour ahead, Trump's tough international stance and efforts to keep the economy open have protected the United States from the COVID financial meltdown other parts of the world have experienced horribly. As Harris and Biden grouse about the state of the economy, the question is, what would they have done differently? Well, we know the answer. They would have shut down the entire country, a la California and New York, causing a completely unnecessary economic collapse. Today, they pushed for a national mask mandate. Your rights be damned. We're going to explore the necessity of that in a minute. Trump has stood up firmly, some thought too firmly, on the international stage, defending personal and religious rights and for the strength of the economy. He has delivered results during a very trying time. When confronted with the same international crises or economic challenges, what would Biden do tomorrow? He'll probably step aside. At least those are my thoughts.